So let's look at a comparison of Williams syndrome individuals, which is abbreviated here WMS, uh, versus Down syndrome individuals, DNS, Down syndrome, when it comes to their language production abilities. And so if you look at this task where uh, the participant is asked to describe the story that they just saw, the story that maybe goes along where this is the ending scene. It looks like Williams syndrome individuals don't seem to have an obvious deficit for putting together complex utterances the way that Down syndrome individuals do. So if you look at the Williams syndrome excerpt, so here's a Williams syndrome individual age 13, and you know he was looking for the frog. What do you know? The frog family, two lovers, and they were looking, and then he was happy because they had a big family and said goodbye, and so did the frog ribbit, right? And you're like, okay, you know, it's a fine enough story. And if you look at the Down syndrome individual, age 13, you see something that looks very, very different, right? So there you are, little frog. They're another little frog. They in that water thing. That's it, frog right there, right? Much simpler, missing some of the morphology, right? They in that, they instead of they are in that, they're another instead of there's another, right? Missing some of the morphological information and just much simpler utterances, right? And then I'm not going to read you the entirety of this Williams syndrome individual age 17, but once again, you see very complex utterances and a, a narrative structure that's much more complex. Suddenly, when they found the frogs, there was a little family. Look at these, a female and a male, and also lots of baby frogs. And, you know, goodbye, Mrs. Frog. Goodbye, many frogs. I might see you again if I come around again. Thank you, Mr. Frog, for letting me have one of your baby frogs to remember him. Right? Like, I mean, there's this, like, whole thing going on here. Lots of complexity. The morphology looks good. The syntax looks good. And then you look at this, uh, this equivalent aged individual. This is age 18 for Down syndrome. And again, it's just so much less that's there. Here we have some of the morphology, the there of their hiding. See the frogs, the baby frogs, uh, the boy and the dog saw the frogs, the frogs got babies, the boy saw the no, the boy say goodbye. So not even said, but say, right? So we're missing that morphology. Much simpler structure, right? Like there seems to be a definite deficit for the Down syndrome individuals compared to the Williams syndrome individuals. And this is again, the sort of the striking difference in their language ability. But both of these, remember, have cognitive deficits, and it really shows up in an interesting way when it comes to spatial organization, spatial information. So the task that both your Williams syndrome and your Down syndrome individuals were asked to do was to copy this picture. So if they had this picture, they were looking at it, and they were asked to copy it. So let's look at what's going on. So first we have a house, and let's look at our Williams syndrome individuals. So it's like you've got some doors here. Here you've got sort of pieces that are named, like again, it's like this is the swimming pool, which is not in the original picture, but there you are, and a sidewalk. But here are the windows, here's the roof, here's the door, and, you're, and you know, and here we just see them all laid out. Like here are the windows, here's the fact that it's two stories, right? And it's like, wow, you've gotten a lot of cases, a lot of these pieces, right? But you haven't gotten the fact that it's a house, right? Versus check out our Down syndrome individuals. They've got that overall house shape. We've got sort of our triangle and our, our square. Like they all have that. It's just the internal organization that's completely messed up. So that's what they mean when they say that Williams syndrome individuals are poor on global organization, right? They kind of missed the fact that this was a house shape, but they got like a lot of little details, sometimes additional details that they invented, right? But they got a lot of little details. But the Down syndrome individuals are poor on internal detail, right? They've got the overall global organization, but they kind of missed the internals. Like, where are these windows? Where is the door, right? They kind of messed up on that. And you can see that here again with this block design task where you have this block, this bigger square. You've got two white squares and two black squares in this diagonal pattern. And our Williams syndrome folks are getting the fact that there are four squares. And most of the time they get the fact that you have two black ones and two white ones, but they completely missed this overall global organization. They're really focusing on the details while our Down syndrome individuals, you know, in fact, in this case, completely reversed the details, right? They've messed up the internals, but they've got the overall shape correct. And then this one is the most striking example of the difference between Williams syndrome and Down syndrome. So we have, this is the local global task. And what do you see? Is you see a bunch of little Ys and the pattern these little Ys are in is actually the letter D, right? And so what do you expect? Our Williams syndrome, they're poor on global organization, so they completely miss the fact that these are organized in a D structure. But they totally got the fact that they're made up of Ys, like Ys, all the Ys, but they missed the global organization. Versus, let's check our Down syndrome, who are not so great at internal detail, 
but perfectly fine on the fact that this is a D. Right, so this really demonstrates the difference between Williams syndromes, their deficit, and Down syndrome. And for whatever reason, and maybe this is linked, maybe this you know sort of attention to local detail at the expense of global organization is something that's very beneficial for language learning because Williams syndrome individuals seem to do great with language, while our Down syndrome individuals who are great at global organization but really suffer when it comes to noticing the small details. Maybe that's why they're missing out on details like that morphology that they missed before and other things that are important for syntactic structure, right? That's local detail that they're missing out on.